you've got the staging area. So when you do a git commit, then it goes to the local repository. So this is where it is now ready to be pushed. So up till your git add and git commit, all the changes stay within your local laptop itself. It's not reflected to all the other users. Now, once you do a git push, that is where the remote repository uh, is reflected of the change and the other users can start look, looking at whatever change that you have done. So we'll look at all these different commands in detail, uh, but the most common commands that you have is you, have, you, do, you do a file change, you do a git add, then you do a git commit. By, at the end of the commit, your files are still in your local repository. Once you do a git push, that is the only time your central repository gets updated. Now all the other developers, so what they're doing is they're doing a git fetch or they're doing a git pull. So that, that is the time when the first developers changes are reflected back onto the workspace. I'll give you time for the questions, uh, but uh, this, is, this is what I wanted to tell. So we'll look at all these commands in detail as well. Now, Git branching. So one of one of the very absolute uh, essential commands is to try to understand that uh, what does a branching mean. So if you if you are new to this concept of branching, uh, so try to try to see uh, you've got all these different sort of branches, and I'll try to explain what these different branches mean. So let me see if I can if I'm able to draw something here for you. So let me try to open up a notepad. Let me see if I can. All right. So what we are trying to see here is that uh, is the branching strategy. So let's say you've got a code running in production and you've got a. Uh, All right, so you've got a version here uh, and let's call it as master branch. So now mas master branch is something uh, where your production code lies. So let's say you've got this specific version. From this specific version, uh, you have a developer. So this is a developer branch. So if your code here is V1, your developer branch, once you copy, So this will be V1 as well. So the same version gets copied. So you create a parallel branch called as develop branch, and then you put in a V1 version. Now there's something, so there are different types of branches here. So one is master. You've got developer. You've got feature branch. And you've also got hotfix branch. Now, all these different branches are used for different purposes. Uh, and uh, so the master branch, nobody updates the master branch directly because it's the, it's the code which is running into production. So what you do is, if you've got a project, and uh, so what you do, when if you've got a project, you create a developer branch out of it. And then all the developers will be working on the developer branch. So for example, if there's a developer branch and you've got another code change here, let's say we call it as V2. So there's a code change which is done. Your master branch will go like that. Your developer branch goes like that. Now, if there are multiple users, so let me just, let me just delete that. So in, within any organization, there will not be just one developer, right? So there, will, there can be multiple developers. All these developers will be assigned specific features. So you take this feature here. So now this feature branch also has got a code of V1, right? So this is, which is the replica here. So some changes have been done directly onto the developer branch, which, which a developer is allowed to do. 
but but if there are multiple features so they, they will form a part of the feature branch so let's say the feature branch has got multiple changes so which will be here as v3 let's say there's again a change version 4 so these are all the different versions of the files right and now once this version feature branch is done they would want to merge onto the developer so what happens is from whichever branch you are pulling you'll have to put it back so if you are pulling it from the master branch eventually all the changes will be merged onto the master branch here so if you are put, pulling up the changes from developer branch so all the changes will have to be eventually merged onto the developer branch as well right so so let's move that so let's say you've got a feature branch here a feature branch you've got a version 4 now version 4 is the let's say uh, if it is an approved feature so this version 4 is now put on here right so now this version becomes a match of version 2 which was here and version 4 so all these changes so this becomes version 5 okay now this version is now ready to be deployed onto production so let's say there's an, another version called as some more uh, code changes were done uh, there was version 6 here now this version 6 is now ready to be deployed onto production so now in the meanwhile there is a scenario where you have got this master branch all this development is taking place and all this development which you see here all this development is uh, let's say it takes around four months to to be done by that time your production is already running and then production will also have a there's a production support which is already running right so production support will not be waiting for six months to 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 fix anything right so what production support will do is they will create another branch called as a hotfix branch right so let's take that. so what production support will do is they will create another branch temporarily called as a let's call as h f1 change right and this is this is by itself is a hot fix so we've got four types of branches now master hot fix developer and feature development is something which goes on for months but this is something which has to be implemented right away in the production so hot fix some problem in production they take the code they change the code here and then they deploy it in production right so so now the point has changed from what, what when this developer branch was created here when this development branch was created here the point has changed now because now the production code is that right so when you are merging your v6 onto if you're trying to merge your v6 onto your master you will have to take into account the changes from hf1 as well so what you will do is you will you will there are two ways to do it one is you put these changes onto v6 or the other one is you you can pull the changes from master first create another version and then you deploy it there so as let's say v7 All right. Uh, now I'll show you this image, which is very similar to what I am trying to draw. So this is what I tried to draw so far. So you've got a you've got a master branch here. Uh, let me full screen, please. Yeah, I'm just doing that. Yeah. So you've got a master branch here with a v, with a v1 version. You've got a developer which is trying to take up this branch. All the same version. Developer is doing some code. There are multiple features. Other developers are working. They're trying to work on their code. Eventually, they merge it back to the development branch. But there has been a change uh, in the production support. There's a hotfix branch created and merged back to the master. Similarly, uh, you've got a release branch. 
Now the release branch, if you've got multiple developer branch, multiple features branch, at that point you create a release branch. So then you, you merge your changes from your development branch onto your release branch. And then finally the code is merged onto master. All right, questions. Yes, so, uh, yeah, well, go ahead. Uh, sort of, sir, like in my previous organization where I used to work, so they used to have two uh, environments. One was staging and one was production. So when the when any developer, let's say, worked on any feature and the code used to be merged into master, the changes would reflect into staging. And uh, like once the like changes are verified, then there was something known as release, like... Uh, based on the commits, they, they would like select the commits, they have to merge into production. So can you give a little context on how it used to happen? Because I never got to know what, what was happening back then. Right. See, uh, so you, you as, I, as I said earlier, so you, you got this release branch, right? So this is, this is what you call as pre-production or uh, it depends on how complex your organization is. So I've worked on uh, large enterprises where you have got a pre-prod branch, you've got a release branch, you've got multiple developers and feature branches. So eventually all these branches will be merging onto a release. So 